from the DCEU sending extremely mixed signals to facing the fact that his Green Arrow wasn't the best, here's why Stephen Amell hates James Gunn's recasting of the Green Arrow. Steven played the Green Arrow in the Arrowverse for a whopping eight seasons, and with Gunn's DC Universe changing everything up, Steven has strong opinions about it. With the old Arrowverse and the DCEU coming to an end, there's a totally new DC Universe in the works, and everyone's curious about who will play the new batch of DC superheroes. Recently, Steven talked about the future with these new heroes and the day someone else will take on the role of Green Arrow in future DC Universe projects. He says that he sees himself as a custodian of the character, someone who's guarding it for the fans, and that's a cool way to put it. Sure, he hates the idea of being replaced, but he's excited to see what DC Studios will do with The Archer in their new movie franchise. According to Steven, the folks over at DC need to make up their minds, and he's wondering if they think they're better than television or if they want to join forces with the small screen universe and create something fans will love. Clearly, he feels like they're sending mixed signals, but at the same time, he wishes them all the best and hopes they make some amazing movies. Steven says that right now, the DCEU needs TV superheroes more than the other way around because audiences really connect with them at home. Sounds like Steven's tooting his own horn, and he says he'd love to play Arrow again if given the chance. He understands that someone else will take up the Green Arrow mantle, but doesn't think he's completely hung up his bow just yet. He might not be up for doing a full 22-episode season as the character again, but he's definitely open to the idea of doing something more limited. The lengthy seasons are super time-consuming and exhausting, and after his long run in the Arrowverse on the CW, he'd rather return for a shorter stint, or even do a movie. But would he really come back? Well. Actor Michael Rosenbaum recently had a chat with Steven, and they talked about the possibility of his return. Steven didn't rule it out completely, but he insists that a comeback would depend on a few things. One of those factors is, of course, the storyline. Steven wants something special, something that'll surprise fans in a major way. Because let's be honest, by the time the show ended, it lost that initial spark that got us all hooked in the first place. So the storyline would have to be perfect to make it worth his while. Now let's talk money because that's on Steven's mind too. He knows he wouldn't be able to negotiate an outrageous amount for a one-off appearance. And even though money's important, it's not the biggest deciding factor for him. But it's unlikely that he'll be coming back, especially after he stood up against Warner Brothers recasting habits in the past. In 2014, Steven stirred controversy when it was announced that Ezra Miller would be taking over as The Flash, and not Grant Gustin, the actor who plays the role on TV. Steven argues that Grant did all the work to get people hyped up about the character, so he should have been the one to play him in the movies too. The Flash was getting record-breaking views, and Steven felt that the way Warner Brothers unveiled their slate of DC movies could have been handled better. They used Grant's success to push their movies, without ever giving Grant a second thought. From Steven's perspective, Gustin should have been given more time to establish himself as The Flash before another actor was announced to play the iconic hero. As someone who mentored Grant and was protective of him, Steven says the timing was unfair to his fellow actor. But even then, despite his criticism of Warner Brothers, Steven made it clear that he had no issues with Ezra playing The Flash and acknowledged Miller's talent and confidence in his ability to do justice to the character. But things didn't really work out for Ezra's Flash, so maybe DC doesn't really know what they're doing. Ezra's involvement brought way more problems than anyone expected, from changes in directors and writers to the movie-facing delays and pushing back its release date not to mention creating uncertainty among fans who were waiting for the movie's release. But it doesn't stop there. And the controversies surrounding Ezra only complicated things for the franchise even more. Accusations of violence and grooming of minors have surrounded the actor, causing negative publicity that Warner Brothers has been struggling to deal with ever since. Because of it all, they've started sidelining Miller to shield the movie from any additional PR damage. What makes all of this even worse is that Ezra's involvement hit Warner Brothers where it hurts the most, right in the pocketbook. It's no secret that they're going to take a hit at the box office thanks to Miller's antics, and because of how problematic the actor has been, DC hasn't been able to promote The Flash the way they'd like to. So Steven was right. DC went with Ezra over Grant and ended up destroying The Flash in the process. 
big mistake. With that said, Arrow's in a completely different place and the character desperately needs a reboot. Despite lacking superpowers, the Green Arrow stands as one of the most influential heroes in the DC Universe. Even though Oliver Queen's journey from a stranded survivor on the treacherous island of Lian Yu to the iconic vigilante fans know and love has been one of the best stories we've seen on TV, it wasn't quite what fans of the comics were expecting. The CW's Arrow took liberties with certain comic book elements, but they did incorporate several tropes like pulling inspo from the story of Green Arrow Year One during Oliver's time on Lian Yu in the first two seasons. But as the series progressed, it deviated from the comics resulting in weaker connections to the source material. Oliver's League of Assassins arc wasn't a big deal in the comics at all, but in the show, there's entire seasons dedicated to it. Not only that, his personality also underwent significant changes throughout the series. So he wasn't the witty, fast man that would take down anyone who threatened his city anymore. Instead, he was just a guy who has a past of taking down bad guys. And because of that, fans have been dying to see a version of Arrow that actually holds true to the comics. The Green Arrow is supposed to bring more to the table, and isn't just some sidekick to Batman with a bow and arrow. I mean, let's face it, the concept of a wealthy, morally upright individual fighting crime without superpowers isn't exactly groundbreaking in the superhero genre. That's Batman. But it wouldn't be hard to introduce another hero with similar motivations. And that's where the Green Arrow comes into play. He offers a fresh perspective while still upholding the same values that make Batman an iconic character. And it's clear that there's a place for Green Arrow in the DC Universe. He brings his own unique flavor to the mix, and his introduction could diversify the superhero lineup. The key is to present Green Arrow in a way that distinguishes him from Batman and showcases his individuality, something that wasn't happening in Arrowverse. If we're talking about him really being the Arrow that comic book fans love, we'd have to rewind things all the way back to season one. Even though Oliver's powerful and can make the craziest villains cry, he's supposed to be cynical, broken, and detached. In order to get that, we're gonna need a new face, a fresh perspective, and a brand new arrow for that. A new green arrow can totally fit into the slate of upcoming DC projects like HBO Max's Lanterns. In the comics, Green Arrow and Hal Jordan, one of the Lanterns, join forces and dub themselves the Hard Traveling Heroes. The Lantern series is all about two detectives uncovering a dark truth and facing a massive threat. Sounds like the perfect opportunity for Green Arrow to swoop in and lend a hand. Maybe it'll start with a cameo, but who knows? It could pave the way for his very own film down the line. There's other options too, like the upcoming Black Canary film, and although it's still in development, it could be a chance to put Green Arrow in the spotlight. They could focus on him as a side character, give him his own storyline, and maybe even spin it into an animated series based on how people respond to his first appearance. I mean, that's what DC did with the Flash TV series. They had Grant showing up as a side character in Arrow, and right after he got all the fans, which is when his solo series was announced, so it'd make total sense for the movies to follow a similar pattern. There you have it, guys. From facing the fact that his Green Arrow wasn't the best, to the DCEU sending extremely mixed signals. That's why Stephen A. Mel hates James Gunn's recasting of the Green Arrow. 